levels, levels, levels. Who's got the levels? Yep. <laughs> we look good. Okay. Awesome. Good. And so it's okay if I record this, right? Sure. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. Yep. So, yeah, this, I told you this was for a, a class, um, just doing an eth ethnography um, about, you know, flat earthers. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not here to, like, attack your beliefs uh, or anything. It, it's okay if you do believe it or not i <laughs> i've know. wouldn't i know i know a lot of people will say it's like oh no no we're here you know but it's it's totally okay uh and you're down in what pacific university down in yeah. oregon yeah cool awesome did you did you get a chance by the way were you there during the uh the eclipse uh a couple years ago i was i was yeah i went over to corvallis and uh i got the full the full totality totality and it was a really yeah. good that was real. You were lucky. I, most of the yeah. country just doesn't understand. Until you're in the blackout zone, you haven't seen anything. Oh yeah, for sure. That's awesome. So, anyway, where do you, where do you want to start? Um, I was um, I'm kind of curious about you know your upbringing, upbringing, and like how you grew up, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. I grew up on a well, not exactly little, but fairly small island up in the northwest of the United States, uh, north of Seattle, called Whidbey. Mm -hmm. Which is just it's it's the island just south of the San Juans, San Juan Islands, mm -hmm. and uh, grew up in a in, you know fairly rural island environment, which is weird, considering you know we can see you know civilization is all around us, we can see it, but yeah. it's on the on the other side of the water, which is only a couple miles away, and went through uh, the the whole school system here, you know, grade school through high school, and then graduated and went. Uh, my first year was over in Pullman. At, okay. uh, at Washington State and I was super young I graduated early and probably wasn't the best move because I just drank my way through the uh, my freshman year and then came back and went to Western up uh, near in Bellingham and okay. went there until my junior year until I was thrown out for manufacturing fireworks on campus <laughs> which was a whole nother story for another time and then uh, uh, during my, uh, what's it called? Um, wow, I'm drawing a blank. Hang on, I have a head cold. Uh, not probation, but um, community service. Oh, jeez, can't believe I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, I, I was teaching computer kids or computers to kids uh, down at the middle school because I knew everybody because I my my mom was a teacher and I grew up in a teacher's lounge basically. And won a little computer game tournament, a computer pinball tournament, which was worldwide. And the publisher out of Boulder, Colorado, of all places, he had relocated from Southern California, where most of the game publishers are. Uh, that's where he grew up, was in Colorado. Uh, hired me. And they, they, I went out there and I played video games for a living for the first few years. And then, because Boulder was such a great startup town for tech companies back then in the mid-90s. Ended up uh, teaching proprietary software for the next 20 years. And oh. during that time, never got married, never had kids. And if you don't get married or have kids, you have a lot of free time on your hands. <laughs> a huge amount of free time. And so I had thought I had finished the internet several times over. Because I mean, the internet wasn't that big back then. Yeah. And got into a bunch of conspiracies. Not, I wasn't... I, yeah, I was a conspiracy guy, but I wasn't one of the tinfoil hat guys. I just had an opinion on them. I, I, I'm different from most conspiracy people where I will put myself in the other person's shoes. Because I think for every conspiracy, there has to be a reason. It's not like, you know, we're talking about evil, evil people. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of evil people there. But they're generally doing it for what they consider to be the greater good. And so I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy there was. And then 2014, just bored out of my mind with, with conspiracies. It's like, okay, I'll look at Flat Earth. Why not? I've looked at everything else. There's no reason for me to, to uh, shy away from this thing. And that was one of the worst mistakes ever. I, I just, that's how I got into it. And here we are, four years later, you're talking to me. Yeah. Um, would you ever, like, uh, part of a di another conspiracy? Or is, like, Flat Earth, like, the first one you really got, like, into? No. I mean, I had, again, I had strong opinions of, of all the big ones that were out there. Uh, I mean, big, big on a physical scale, like 9-11 or um, Pearl Harbor or JFK or just about every ma major war. So if you can think of a conspiracy, I mean, if there's one that, that sticks out to you, by all means, throw it out there. And I almost guarantee I've got a take on it. And it's a fairly objective take. 
but Flat Earth was the first one that I committed fully to, which was okay. okay. I, where I, where I actually put something out there on social media and said, "This is what I think about this particular opinion or this particular conspiracy." Tell me where I'm right or wrong. And immediately people, the majority of people that were coming back at me saying, you know what, you may be onto something. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, That's right. Interesting. Thank you. Um, so um, I guess my next question I'll ask is, um, you know, as a flat earth group, you know, I feel like you're a good person to talk to about like meetups and like how, how those work and like, like, what's the kind of, like, rituals you guys go through in those... In those like There's a lot of chanting, robes, um, <laughs> not as much human sacrifice as you might expect. Um, okay. No, no, no. It started out really, really easy. Uh, the first person that ever did it was Patricia Steer, and mm -hmm. she did it at a restaurant where she paid for the whole thing and catered it herself at this restaurant. I think it was a vegan restaurant down in Houston. Okay. And almost immediate and there were quite a few people showed up where where i mean she only had a certain number of slots and it filled up to where she couldn't take any more people and then i decided to do one immediately afterwards up in seattle and then that just kind of caught on to where people realize it's like all you have to do is pick a restaurant or a bar or you know something relatively quiet if you can help it i mean sports bars aren't great because you have to yell anyway yeah and just you know put the put the uh, promotion out on social media and you know if you build it they will come and people just start showing up at these things mm -hmm. and the reason one of the reasons why was because they realized when they got there you were in in, in the midst of a group where no one was going to judge you like uh, opposed to your friends and your family or your co-workers it, it was kind of like they all ended up kind of the same way kind of like a happy version of an aa meeting and I know you're, you're too young to know what an AA meeting is. <laughs> but, you know, you go there and it's like, hey, my name is Mark. Hey, Mark. I've been flat earth here now for three years. And here's my story. <laughs> and that's how, what, how people people would be sharing their stories a lot. And then we turned the, that into conferences. Did our first big conference in Raleigh in 2017. And then did a Canadian conference and a UK conference and another US conference last year. And then this year, uh, I think we're in six countries nice. this year and uh yes yeah, so that's how the meetups and the conferences sort of blossomed from there um when was the first meetup with patricia like you know like what year that was just oh that was uh 2016 the beginning of 2016 so 2015 we were just kind of feeling the whole thing out we had no idea what we were doing in 2015 yeah. Uh, other than we were creating content and nobody had met e met each other and then the mm -hmm. beginning of 2016 is when uh, Patricia decided to to do a meetup, and uh, I'll say this: it, it caught on really, really fast. Yeah, I mean, okay. nobody does a formal. Very few people do formal catering things like she did. It's very, very informal, but it's it. That's one of the reasons it caught on is just people. It's like, oh, let's just go to TGI Fridays and you know put put a thing out there, and fifty people show up, great. If thirty people show up, great. If hundred people show up, not so great because it it, <laughs> it can get a little. And then some of the meetups were. <clears throat> more formal like national geographic had us do a special meetup for them down in los angeles where we had over 100 people show up and that was kind of fun so yeah awesome yeah um and like thinking about um like artifacts kind of like for the flat earth group you know you have like the flat earth model um do you think there's any like other like like I don't know if it's a weird word to say, but like artifacts that like belong to your uh, your group. Um, that's just it. For for a lot of the flat Earth, it's fairly ethereal. I mean, yeah, the AE map, otherwise known as the azimuthal equidistant map, is probably the most popular because it's on the UN flag and it's used by the USGS, and 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 people can kind of get their head around it pretty quickly. Uh, and it's it, it's it's casually embraced. There are other people that, that's, you know, like, again, I, I said, I think in the documentary, 70% believe in a dome, 30, roughly 30% yeah. don't believe in a dome, but they do believe everybody at the end of the day, everyone believes that there's no, uh, that the globe is not the model, mm -hmm. which is why flat earth keeps it. So it doesn't matter what exact flat earth model you follow. Uh, at the end of the day, you can't go back to the globe. And so 
which is why I use the the comparison to the clans of the Scottish Highlands, which yeah. is oh yeah they'll they'll s- scrap with each other all day long, but at the end of the day they still hate the English. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, for for us the artifacts include the the AE map and f- if you're in the biblical side of things passages in the Bible. Uh, but there's not a lot of, not a lot of concrete artifacts out there. I mean, yeah, the, the, the UN flag has been used. Luckily it's not trademarked, uh, yeah. has been used for a lot of our t-shirts. All right. <clears throat> and then do you think, um, like in meetups or stuff, this is like a general, like language, like how you, uh, is like really casual, or like kind of like what's the focus of the conversation and stuff? It's really open because the the arguments that Flat Earth puts forth to anybody in mainstream science is kind of like a shotgun pattern approach anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have, I mean, there's so many different facets that when you go to a Flat Earth meetup, it's, uh, you can talk about anything you want. And in fact, you don't even have to necessarily stick to Flat Earth. There's no rules. You just kind of go. I mean, yeah, you can pick, you, you you can start talking about experiments, you know, the balloon experiments, laser, long distance photography, uh, or you can start attacking NASA, you know, making, making fun of everything they've ever done or go after SpaceX uh, or go after personalities yeah. like Neil deGrasse Tyson or Bill Nye or Brian Cox or eh, not so much Michio Kaku. He kind of gets off the hook right now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's wide open and which is again, why the, the meetups and everything does so well, because there's so many topics to choose from. You almost never run out of things to say. I mean, like this interview here, I, I did an interview yesterday and we only had 10 minutes because it was a TV thing. And, but I've gone, oh my God, on some like long, long podcast, two and a half, three hours. And, and I mean, I could have gone longer. I did, I did once did a nine hour thing for a lady who was writing a book, who was still writing a book. And, you know, it's, I think we just got exhausted by the end of the day. So anyway. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, during your, um, uh, the documentary, uh, towards the end, you started talking about, you know, you've gotten the funding and you're going to start, you know, going out there and finding the ice wall. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm curious how that's going, um, if there's any uh, the, major... The rumors of the ice wall expedition have been greatly exaggerated. Uh, kind of this perfect storm of social media. It oh, started yeah. out with a cruise. So the conference this year... So the first year was in Raleigh. The second year was in Denver. The third year, which is this year, is in Dallas. And next year, it was going to be a cruise mm-hmm. out of Miami, right? And some people started making fun of that particular cruise. It was just a leisure cruise, right? It's out of Miami. Yeah. And people say, well, they should go, they should start doing an expedition, right? They should, they should head for the ice wall. Some British journalists decide yeah. to run with it and other people picked up on that. And then there was a television pr- uh, producer out of England who also said he was toying with the idea. And then in the, in the Logan Paul thing, which just came out, he and his girl, you know, even though it was complete fiction, you know, yeah. he, there was nothing serious about it. He and his fake girlfriend uh, mentioned, it's like, oh, you know, we should run away to Antarctica. Between the three things, all of a sudden the media says, oh, well, it's absolutely happening. Not only is there an expedition to Antarctica, but there's going to be a whole bunch of flat earthers on it and Logan Paul's going. And it's, where did you get all this stuff? And so, yeah, we've had to like do some, not some repair work on this where we've had to tell people it's like look there's no there is no expedition planned as far as big money projects going uh most of it has to do with laser experiments high altitude balloon uh long distance photography that sort of thing that's usually where the money is going uh, the reason why an antarctic expedition would be so problematic is because of the antarctic treaty which is the closest thing to bulletproof you've ever seen in a treaty it's the only treaty that's never been broken Mm-hmm. So no, no, there's not going to work now. Okay. In fact, you'd be bet you'd be probably more likely to do your own rocket mission, uh, a, a physical rocket mission into orbit, or working with SpaceX or working with NASA than you would be to get an Antarctic expedition going. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then, um, um, so I'm just yeah, I want to maybe get some more information on like how you perceive like the government and like NASA and like just in a general 
like, I don't know, just go, go, uh, go with that. Okay, uh, what do you want first, the government or NASA? Uh, just just my opinions on, on governments in general, the United States government? Uh, let's go with governments in general first. Okay, uh, governments in general are, for lack of a better term, a necessary evil. And that is, look, there has to be an infrastructure, there has to be a, uh, any, there's got to be some sort of governing body for, for anything. It's just, it, it's just natural. Otherwise, you run into chaos. It's sort of like law enforcement. People don't understand that, you know, they say, like, law enforcement is a necessary evil. And I go, no, 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 no. Law enforcement is actually just necessary. Uh, we, we, we've, we've seen what happens to civilizations before law enforcement or if law enforcement is, re, you know, um, removed. Uh, to use a line from uh, the Heath Ledger Batman movie, which is uh, pe the sy people are only as good as the system allows them to be. Mm -hmm. And so, no, do I, I have a different opinion on governments than most people do in the conspiracy world. Most people are like, oh no, it should be a, a completely transparent system and governments should do everything for the people. And it's like, yeah, but they're made up of men and men are greedy and men do things for power and for, and for money and things get corrupted over time and but do they try to do things for the greater good yes but also if it helps benefit them if, mm -hmm. if 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 you can do both at the same time so there are going to be secret programs and look we we live in a world i don't want to pick on government too much because we live in a world of lies it's just a, it's just a question of how the what you're willing to um I hate using the word accept, but it's true. What lies you're willing to look at and what lies you're not willing to look at. Everyone's got this line drawn in the sand. And that is everything on this side is is the truth and everything on the other side maybe, uh, you know, is lies. But it, within that truth, there's also lies, but you don't want to look at them. It's like, uh, you know, you just kind of gloss over it. And by that, I mean, I mean, think about every every aspect of our lives, business, politics, uh, sports, entertainment, uh, even journalism and science. Like there's, cons there's not just lies, there's massive conspiracies within all these things. We all know it. Uh, you, you can pick any one of them. And so when it comes to government, it, sorry, it's too easy. The, the problem with government is that the men who run in government lie for a living. Not all of them, of course, but most of them do. And by that, and I'm sure there's politicians saying, wow, that's outrageous. How uh, I've never done a dishonest thing in my life. It's like, yeah, but as a politician, yeah, I'll just pick on politicians for a sec. Yeah. Um, you overpromise and you underdeliver all the time. That's what a politician does. And sometimes you never deliver. And then there's sometimes you never had any intention of delivering. Yeah. And if if, that's, if there's any more definition of a lie where you're making a promise, you're absolutely not going to keep. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yes. So when it comes to government, that's the biggest problem is that the men that make up the government were corrupt since freaking day one. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And that's a problem. And and so, I mean, come on. lawyer, Lawyers, used card salesmen, and politicians. Tell me the difference between the three. It's usually just salary. You know, yeah. they, they all lie. Um, when it comes to NASA, I mean, they're a branch of the United States military. They are Department of Defense all the way. Uh, the only difference there is that they don't carry guns, they wear white, and they smile for the cameras. Does that make them any less uh, beholden to the military code? No. No, of course not. We all know that there are military secrets that can be kept. You know, we kept the the atomic weapons program a secret. Technically, or say categorically, we don't have any spies. Even though we have this massive military intelligence budget, we don't have any spies. And you say, oh, well, of course we do. I go, really? Who are they? Who were they? Name me a spy at any given time. Uh, we, did, we don't have spy planes until they're shot down. We don't have secret programs until they're discovered. Area 51 categorically still does not exist even though there's been plenty of television shows going up in the mountains with long distance cameras and they can see the whole thing with the airport. It's a massive complex, but we don't get to go in because it's a secret military program. Segway that into NASA. NASA was built on, they are uniquely military. They were built on military technology, missile technology. They were founded by the still burning embers of the Nazi war machine. You know, the only reason NASA even exists is because all the, the rocket scientists that we grabbed from Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union got the other half, which is the other group that had a space program going. So, yes, NASA was built on lies 
and built on corruption and but they were done it but to be fair they were they did it for a very specific reason which was they were the only reason NASA was made or created was to keep this thing a secret and by that I mean the world that we live in once it was discovered in 1960 that we didn't actually live on a ball we lived in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling they had to spend a lot of money and time to keep it a secret Sorry, that's my, my big ramble. Yeah, I remember I do this for a living now. No, yeah. They're very good at it, though. I will admit. Yeah, thank you. No problem. And then, um, <clears throat> as far as um, professions go for uh, flat earthers, what is the most common or or and and or highest, uh, like, like um, salary-wise or... Um, Take yeah. your pick. I mean, most of, most of the people in flat earth uh, just do normal jobs. Uh, but, but that being said, the higher salary you have, the lower chance you're going to be talking to anybody about flat earth because yeah. you have too much to lose. Uh, a perfect example would be a structural engineer that we had who was going to co-sponsor the first conference in Raleigh, which was in the documentary. Mm -hmm. And what I did not realize was when you become... A professional in something where you have to get a certificate for or you take a test in the whole nine yards mm -hmm. they don't just give you a certificate and you're on your way you are beholden to the code of that particular profession so if you're an accountant you have to take an exam an engineer you have to take an exam a lawyer you have to take an exam right and yeah. once you become these things you are not supposed to ever paint that profession in a bad light and so all of a sudden, and we had trolls that did this, where they actually contacted the uh, the engineering ethics board. I didn't even know there was such a thing. And said, oh, yeah, one of your guys is co-sponsoring the, the first Flat Earth Conference. And they contacted him immediately and said, yeah, we, you are now under investigation. He had to get a lawyer, and the lawyer said, distance yourself as quickly as you can. And that was it. He pulled his name off of everything, dropped his wow. channel, dropped all his, his stuff. So... That being said, there are a lot of people in the flat earth community. 90% of our members are in the closet. Uh, mm -hmm. Highest salary? Pff, I don't know. Kyrie Irving. How's that? Uh, yeah. he, he'd probably be the highest. Millions of dollars and uh, definitely the highest profile. Everybody else, anyone else that comes out about flat earth generally doesn't have much to lose as others. You will not see a lot of lawyers or accountants or anyone in political office that's going to really talk about this right now because they're, they're scared they, they yeah. because it's got such a stigma tied to it. They, they don't want to do it. So there is a lot of, I, if you, if you're looking for more specifics, I don't know all the details, but more blue collar. Definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, um, how does the, the flat earth group like view society? You know, I think you guys are always attacked and, um, I'm just wondering how you guys like view the rest of um, the world. The, oh, just gen, just the world in itself. Just like society, yeah. Um, like not bad because everybody came from that society. What I try to tell people is that I can't even yell at anyone that comes at me and says, "Oh, you know, Flatter's retarded. You're an idiot. Blah blah blah. You you should never reproduce." Uh, because at five five years ago, I would have I probably wouldn't have said the exact same things, but I would have yeah. thought it. Yeah. Uh, so everybody came from that side. Everybody was a globalist. Everybody hated flat earth, which should show you the kind of the power of this topic in that everybody starts in the hole. Nobody goes into flat earth thinking it's a great idea. Nobody. Uh, it's just a question of how long it takes you to give up arguing against it. Uh, I, I tried to go out against flat earth and try to disprove it for nine months. Mm -hmm. Other people, the, the average is about two weeks. Because there's so much content out there. Oops, sorry. Ignore that phone call. Uh, the average is about two weeks. And uh, it is... In some, some people can do it in, in only um, tw you know only a day. The fast, fastest person I ever saw was 20 minutes. But no, we don't condemn anyone out there because we were them. There's, there's nothing, there's, I've, I've got no malice towards anybody that, that even makes comments. Now, of course, you know, there's going to be people that would be more rude than others. And, but it's amazing the the rules of being a troll on the inter have, internet have not changed really in the last 20 years, yes. which is you have to remain anonymous. That's the whole point of being a troll. So yeah, the YouTube comment sections are horrible, awful places. Uh, but 99% of the, the, the emails that I get are either positive or neutral 
And the only phone calls I get, which are troll emails or troll phone calls, are drunk. That you know, they're they're just you know, they're slurring and you know, they just they see my phone number and they take they take a shot at me. But uh, no, I have no condemnation of society at all. All right, nice. And uh, um, that's probably everything I need for now. If you have anything that you want to add, please do. Um, right, right now, yeah. Uh, not much. Only that you know, again, don't take. What I try to tell everybody is don't take my word for it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, 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 nobody, I, I'm not here to convince you. I am not here to even persuade you. I'm just here to kind of plant the seed mm-hmm. and you know, do your own research, ask questions. But what I try to challenge people is if, if you treated this topic as a court case, could yourself, could you prove the globe in a court of law? And by that, I mean... That's how I ended up giving up. I think I think of things in, in kind of that legal sense. A lot of Americans do because there's so many legal shows on, which is I finally could. Can I prove to you the, the globe right now? Uh, no, I, I could not prove the globe. I'm sorry. Wow. Sorry. Could I prove the flat earth to you right now? No, I cannot. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat earth model which is why we have a 99% retention rate. Meaning if you go on the flat side, you may not be that enthusiastic. You know, you may, it may fade and be like, all right, well, it's flat and moving on with your life, right? Uh, but you try to go back to the globe and there's nothing there. It's just an empty cardboard box. And it, I've, n- I have yet to see anyone, any hardcore flat earther that's turned back. So anyway, that's, that's my, my rant, my pitch. Hope, hopefully you get something out of it. Well, thank you so much. Um, if I have any more questions, um, I'll reach out to you on email again. Cool. Um, if do you want a copy of, uh, I can send you, uh, after I finish my paper, you want me to send it to you? Would you like yeah, to- yeah, yeah. Email it to me. I, I'd be lo- I'd love, love to read it. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, you have a good rest of your day. Hey, you too. Okay. Bye-bye.